Hamsters are incredibly popular pets. They're famed for being cute little balls of fuzz who just run on their wheels or in their plastic balls or lap up beads of water out of their little water bottles and dig around in wood chips and what have you. But underneath that cute exterior lies a miserable pile of dark secrets. Hamsters, it turns out, are blind, alcoholic, inbred, murderous, cannibalistic cranks. Hamsters are terrible. For humans, one of the strongest natural emotional forces is the protective instinct a mother feels toward her children. So that's why it's so shocking for many people to find out that it's actually not that uncommon for a mother hamster to kill and eat her babies. There are a number of reasons why this might happen. Stress caused by the size of the litter, fear of the environment, especially if some goony human pokes too close or too often around a hamster cage with a litter of pups in it. A human scent getting on the babies and confusing the mom so that she doesn't recognize her own offspring, insufficient food, or just because the mother feels overwhelmed and worries she won't be able to provide for or protect her babies. It's actually an act of mercy, not just some case of sudden cannibalistic munchies. In that context, it's much clearer that a hamster mother eating her babies is actually just a different manifestation of that same protective maternal instinct that human mothers feel. And it's maybe a little easier to understand. But all that understanding might fall away when you read about how hammy moms sever their pup's head. Respect and understanding, man. They are hard won, but sadly can be lost by something as small and inconsequential as eating your own child's head. Hamsters are rodents, and there's one thing that ties all rodents, as well as related species like rabbits and hares, together. It's the fact that their incisors, their front teeth, grow continuously over the span of their life, like some kind of terrible tooth nightmare. Normally, the teeth stay a normal length because rodents gnaw at their food and they're naturally ground down in that process. Yes, that is also gross and not a great alternative to the mental image of infinitely long teeth. But what happens if their teeth don't get properly ground down in the normal eating process? Well, the teeth might become overgrown and curve into their gums, get caught on things, cause drooling, hyperventilating, and cause problems with swallowing. Those are all terrible and gross things to imagine, so how do you fix it? Well with another terrible and gross thing, trimming your hamster's teeth. The good news is that you can do this simple, horrific process with simple tools you already have in your house whose memory will be forever tainted by this foul dental deed. No need to use a Dremel tool like you might with a larger animal like a rabbit or chinchilla. Just use suture scissors or a pair of fingernail clippers and try not to think about the amateur veterinary dental surgery you did next time you clip a hangnail. The hamster is a burrowing, crepuscular animal which means it's active during the hours of dawn and dusk and lives underground. As such, a good sense of sight is about as useful to them as a never-ending pasta pass at Olive Garden. While hamsters do see okay in dim light, in bright light, they're basically blind. Baby hamsters are blind at birth, and as adults, they can only ever see a few inches in front of their nose. A hamster's main methods of getting around are using their other senses, such as hearing, smell, and touch via their whiskers. The bad news is that this bad vision poses a number of dangers for pet hamsters, as well as their owners. These Mr. Magoos of the animal kingdom are known to walk off high surfaces or jump out of hands or off shoulders and hurt themselves or worse. The lesson here is don't perch your hamster on your shoulders or hold them in your hand while standing up. Also, don't buy them multi-level cages or, you know, put them on high surfaces, even if you think it would be cute to put them on the ceiling fan blade, even if the fan is on low. Hamster's poor vision is also the main cause for biting, as sudden moves frighten them, and if they don't catch or recognize their owner's scent, they might bite defensively at the unknown giant blob trying to shove them into a ball. Despite the clear classification of hamsters as rodents, the hamster seems to have a little canine DNA in its genome as well. Turns out they're part booze hound. That's right. According to the New York Times, hamsters are popular with alcohol researchers because these little dudes are nuts for hitting the sauce. Given the choice between drinking from a bottle of water and a bottle of alcohol, they will choose the alcohol 100% of the time. They love it. How did hamsters develop their adorable love of liquor? It's related to their instinct for hoarding. They bury fruit to store all summer, and when they come back to it in the wintertime, the fruit has fermented and the hamsters get turnt. As a result, they've come to prefer and even seek out the smell and taste of fermented fruit, because that fruit is easier to find by scent. It turns out they can handle their liquor better than humans, though. Their livers are developed enough to metabolize comparatively large servings of alcohol. In terms of size relation to their other organs, a hamster's liver is five times the size of a human's. You know, proportionally, not literally. 
If you had hopes for a whole hamster village in your home, you should throw your hamster house plans in the trash. Turns out hamsters are super territorial. While it's not uncommon to see hamsters caged together in pet stores, it's because these hammies are usually really young. Once hambos hit about 8 to 10 weeks of age, you have to keep them apart so they will fight it out until one or both are dead. Like those guys with switchblades who strap their wrists together in the Beat It video. Even if they don't fight, close proximity between adult hamsters will cause enough stress to significantly shorten their lifespans. The only time adult hamsters should be together is when they're mating, basically. But even then, it's an uneasy truce that's short-lived at best. If you have multiple hamsters, you have to keep them in separate cages, and they should have their own toys. If you have one hamster and you somehow feel like that isn't enough, having two hamsters is a good way to get a million hamsters, because these cute little fluffs are actually unstoppable baby-making machines. A hamster can get prego at just four weeks old, and then a female hamster will come into heat, that is, become receptive for mating every four days. For comparison's sake, most dogs come into heat two or three times a year. You can tell your hambo is in heat because she will give off a strong hormonal odor that will serve as a musky and unwanted reminder of your tiny month-old friend's budding sexuality. If a boy hamster and a girl hamster get together long enough to mate without killing each other, you can expect a litter of hamster pups in about 18 to 22 days, depending on the variety of ham you have. The litter will likely be between 3 and 12 pups, depending on the hamster type, though a Syrian hamster uterus can hold up to 24 little miracles. If this isn't enough babies for you, great news! Dwarf hamster females come back into heat immediately after giving birth, so just refill that furry little mama like a Pez dispenser full of babies and you'll have another dozen pups in less time than it takes for an issue of Southern Living Magazine to come out. Just kidding, absolutely do not breed your hamster two cycles in a row, you monster. Also, adopt. Don't breed. There are enough hamsters. You monster. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about some of the weirdest stuff in the world are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.